Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little 3x3 mini book using up old scrapbook papers. I showed you how to make the uh, larger books the other day. It's a very similar technique, except we're just like doubling up our folds, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. But you can see how you'll have a cute little book that you can keep in your purse. And we're going to do some stamping on this. And um, I was kind of excited because I've had this stamp set for a long time. It's from Lost Coast Designs, and it's the hardware set. Only $13 for all these stamps, um, at least when I bought it anyway. Um, the thing I like about this is that these, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with these, but then I figured all these little keyholes and hinges would be great on these books. Like these long ones would even fit these big ones if I had a more plain cover. So we're going to use, um, we're going to use that stamp on the next book. I used this one right here on this book and I just think it's super cute. They're so easy to make and like I said great way to use up kind of that dated old scrapbook paper like this one right here. I think I had a shirt that had that pattern on it once. Very very uh, very groovy. So what we're gonna do is start by folding the paper in half and each one of each paper you use will give you 16 pages. All right then we're going to after we fold it in half we're gonna fold each edge to the middle just like that okay and then after I get these first uh, these first folds done you want to take your time try to line it up as good as you can sometimes your scrapbook paper is actually not going to be square I noticed with this uh, older package of paper I, that was the situation and then just use a bone folder or a popsicle stick or something to make those folds nice and sharp then you're going to open it up Okay, that's what we have so far. You're going to fold it in half the other way, just like this. I love it when I have, when I finally, I love, sometimes I'll buy stamps and I just don't have a plan for them. Um, and then it takes me a long time to figure out exactly what I want to use them for because I just think they're so cool, but then it's like, well, shoot, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> do you guys ever do that or do you have a plan when you buy stamps? I, my plan is if I don't get them, I might not be able to find them again, <laughs> so I get them. Because I, I actually, stamping, I see my stamps as a collection just as much as I do a hobby that I enjoy. All right, so now we have this grid, which is basically a uh, four by four grid, 16 squares, and we're going to make um, three cuts. So the first cut is going to be the edge all the way up to that first square. Okay, so it's like basically like we're making double what we did in our last book. I'll put a link to that video in the video description so you can check that out if you're watching it on YouTube. If not, just go to my channel, The Frugal Crafter. It'll be, it'll, will have been posted oh, probably within a week of this video going live. Okay, now I'm going to cut from this edge, the opposite edge, to the first square on the, uh, on the opposite side. Um, you can use scissors. I did this project with a bunch of kids at the library last night and we use scissors, but you will get straighter lines if you use a craft knife. So that's what I'm doing here for my book. But you know, of course, if you're doing this with kids, it's just easier for them to use scissors and safer. All right, so now we have what looks like the letter M. Okay, now we're going to do a little uh, accordion folding. So I want my, my papers, my the white to be showing and not the... Um, and not the groovy paisley, but you could do it the other way if you want to make a mini book and you liked your paper, that's fine. What I'm going to do is start by folding these right sides together. Okay, and I'm actually going to put a little adhesive there. And uh, you could use a glue stick or ATG gun. I wouldn't use wet, wet glue just because, whoops, my adhesive's giving me trouble. Surprise. Oh, now I got a big old glue booger there. Let's give that a little bit more. Um, but I wouldn't use a really wet glue because it could seep out the edges and glue your book shut. Okay, so then we're just going to accordion fold our pages up and then we're folding it back this way. So now this is what we have. I'm going to put some adhesive here and also give it a nice fold. I, I really think that it, it adds a lot to use a bone folder just to make sure those creases are pushed down really well. I mean, it's not really essential. I think it's worth the effort though. And we're going to do the same thing here. So you just, we're just basically accordion folding this, accordion folding this. 
fold that over and then we're just going to fold these last few squares don't mind the elephants upstairs and then so on one side you'll have all your pattern paper but on this side you'll have all your white paper and you want to and the reason I folded it like this because you get these these extra these extra sheets here okay so I made three of these for the book I showed you here and I've already gone ahead and made these because you don't need to watch me fold that a bunch of times. If you need to see it again, you can rewind the video. So basically I just want to make sure all my pages are opening up on the right side and I'm going to glue these together using my double-sided tape here. If you are using a glue stick, make sure you let it dry well before you, you know, use the book too much. Try to line these up as well as you can so your book will be neat. You can put as many of these as you want too. I mean, it's such a good way to use up that old scrapbook paper and uh, cute little gifts too, just little thinking of you gifts or stocking stuffers or just handy, handy to have. Oh, I should have used a different color because this top one just kind of blends in with my table, but then you get this great big long book here. Art, this is an art journal, whatever, whatever you want. Now we need to make a cover. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for this. Um, now, if you've ever covered your books for school, when you were a kid, you're gonna know exactly how to do this. I gotta go grab my paper, hang on a sec. And uh, you just need a, like a half of a sheet, so this is 6 by 12, and we're actually going to cut a little bit off in a minute, but to, uh, to cover this, if you've ever done this for your school books, I don't do that anymore in school, but when we were kids anyway, we're going to take, um, center up our little stack of papers, and then I want you to fold up one side and just kind of press up against it, give it a little, um, give it a little crease there, and then you can see, when you remove it, you can see where you folded it, and then you're just going to line it up to the edge so you get a nice flat fold and you're going to crease it. All right, then we want to put this back and it depends on how well lined th things lined up. Um, I'm going to give this a little bit, I usually give it an eighth of an inch, but I'm going to give it a little bit more on this one because I can see I've got a little bit there sticking out. So I'm going to give it probably closer to a quarter of an inch uh, space there. And then I'm just going to fold this one up and crease it pretty tight. And you just get the, you get the feel for how much extra you're going to need once you make a couple of these. And then I'm going to put this in the middle of the book. Okay, make sure I have my pages out. I'm going to see about how much I'm going to need. Okay, I can see I'm going to have plenty of paper. And then what I do at this point is I snug it in there, I push the signature, all of those pages in there, and then I give it a couple little pinches on each side so that I can see about how wide I want my spine. Then I'm going to pull this out again and line up my edges and give it a crease. On that mark I made, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side of the spine. This is just going to make your book a little neater. Now my first book I made, the one I just showed you, I actually had the, uh, I'm going to cut this little excess here. I actually had my, my cover a little tight. I think I'm going to give it a little more wiggle room on this one so the cover stays flat. If you can see here, like the top, the cover kind of wants to kick open. So I want to make it a little, a little flatter here. I'm going to put my book back in here. Okay, and then I'm going to snug it in. And I do want it, I do want it in there, you know, snug. And then I'm just going to give myself a little mark like that on each side. And then I'm going to fold it. I just want to make sure I'm using I'm giving, making sure that I'm, instead of erring on the side of it being too tight, I'm erring on the side of it being a little loose. Do you remember this? Did you do, ever have to do this for your books in school? Actually, I'm going to put this aside in and just double check it before I crease the other side down. So we take our last page and we just stick that in there, just like we would our book cover if you were covering books back in the 80s. And there, I just want to make sure I have that not too tight. And then our following flap would go in on this side. And then we've got our little booklet. There. Oh, that still wants to kick open a little bit. I think I made it a little short on that side. I think, you know what? i got two ways to remedy this. I think I'm just going to fold that Give that a little bit more room on that side. I could trim that off a little shorter, but I didn't want the cover to be too short. So let's try this. Yeah, 
that's got a little more wiggle room for us. Okay, so there, we've got our book. But wait, that's not all. Now we're going to do a little stamping and a little embossing so that it will show up on this dark paper. And I also think I want to add a little ribbon there just so I have a bookmark. And I think this one I'll use, maybe this pink. I have this old uh, seam binding that I dyed a while ago. I'm just going to cut a piece off. How does it get tangled just sitting in the, uh, the ribbon bin? I do not know. All right, but I'll, I'll wait and glue that on in a second. So what I want to do is a little stamping now. I want to show you here. I made a little embossing pouch with some cornstarch in a little sewn up cotton thing. You could put it in a baby sock or whatever. It doesn't matter or just brush some cornstarch on. But this is how it looks if you brush your cornstarch on. This is what happens if you don't de-static your paper. It, the, the embossing powder can stick. You don't get a crisp image. So that's why I do it. It's really important. Um, and I also like to, since I did not mount these stamps, I just used a glue stick and stuck it on a block. It's, I, whoops, I didn't even use a glue stick yet. I'll show you that um, in a second. I want to make sure that I have a little squishy surface to stamp on so that I can get a really good impression. So first step, I'm going to rub this pouch on my paper. Then I'm going to use a glue stick to stick my stamp to my block. Things go on little trips on me today. They're wandering off. I have a wandering glue stick, wandering paper. One of those days, I think. I was up late last night and up early this morning. All right, so I've got that on there. I'm gonna use some gold ink and I'm gonna be using gold embossing powder. You could use your clear embossing ink, that's fine, but I like to use, if I have the color ink, I like to use the color ink and the same color embossing powder just because if I, if, you know, the powder skips or something, I'm gonna have that extra uh, pigment underneath the extra color and I'm just gonna stamp that right on the edge and so it look kind of like the uh, the book has a little lock on it which I think will be kind of special all right got a decent decent impression it's hard to see without the uh, embossing so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of this gold powder on it be generous because you're gonna put the rest right back in the container when you're done If you have any stray bits, um, I don't have too much here, but if you do, just uh, brush it off with the paintbrush. There, and then we're going to cap our powder before we make a mess and heat this up with our heat tool. Just let it get hot for a second. And then it shouldn't take too long. I notice sometimes with these um, pattern papers and even some cardstock that you can see it here, it's doing it on this one, that um, the paper will darken while you're heating it, but then it goes back to the normal color after it's um, cooled off again. So I've noticed that when I use a hot glue gun on some of my papers. There we go, it's all shiny, so I know it's, I know it's all heated, so it doesn't take very long. It doesn't take long to add that step. Knock off that extra loose powder. And then I'm gonna put the ribbon on in the middle with my adhesive. I really like the look of the frayed, kind of crinkly seam binding. I always just dye it with whatever wrinkers or spray mist I have at home at any given moment. And now I am just going to add a little bit of ink to this just to make it stand out a little bit more and kind of make my, um, make my book look a little more vintage. Give it on the edges a little bit. I should be doing this over a scrap of paper. Actually, I do have a scrap of paper right here on the floor, of course. Where else would it be? Just to ink it up. You know, take your time if you want. You can actually just use white paper and even um, completely decorate it with stamps. It would be cute. You make it whatever theme you want. I just think this is a great way to kind of revamp the old ugly paper that we're sick of looking at in our stash. So we don't feel guilty when we go out and buy new paper. And then I'm just wiping it with a tissue to kind of force it into the paper and remove the uh, ink from on top of the embossed design, which I think looks really fantastic. And now we just have to put our book back in. Remember how we did that? We made sure all of our pages were opening up on this right side, the same, you know, the side away from the spine. And we just slide in our end papers. But I mean, talk about a quick and easy bookmaking idea. This is something you can make with the kids. 
you know, let them use scissors, not the X-Acto knife. You could use whatever stamps you like to decorate them, use whatever paper you have on hand, and um, it's just a fun project. Now I used a little paper bead on the end of that one just to, you know, just for fun. You can do that or you can just leave it the way it is. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I'll put a link to the stamps that I used in the video description. They're available at Lost Coast Designs. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.